that I could bring some value to. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Do you have previous experience on any other boards or committees? Uh, just through the nonprofit organization. Uh, so I was with Northwest Trail Alliance uh, for probably about four or five years. I was the membership director and I grew our membership. Uh, not in any public uh, advisory roles I've not been involved in. And, uh, I was back in my engineering. I have a, um, I'm a licensed professional engineer uh, and um, I was involved in a <clears throat> professional engineering organization many years ago. Um, what issues currently facing our city are most important to you, especially involving parks and rec? Um, what I was actually talking to, uh, mentioned to Troy is, is that, you know, access to nature. <coughs> I've seen a lot of uh, changes to Oregon City over the years. Uh, we've grown as a city. We've had, uh, I'm sure we've had population growth in our schools. Um, but also with that comes parks, and we need to have, you know, there's a new park that's going to be coming, uh, building over the next, I think it's the next uh, or spring, I believe, mm -hmm. um, over by Clackamas Community College. And, uh, and I th think that there's some new trends in outdoor recreation for families and kids instead of your traditional park. Uh, maybe I might build that, um, add some new um, ideas to that. Thank you. Um, what type of engineer? I was a uh, um, <clears throat> industrial and manufacturing engineer. Okay, so great. I since have gone on, on to other things. I have my own company. I've been in sales for a long time. So okay, thank yeah. you. That's, that's off the record question. Yeah, <laughs> I was curious. Yeah, exactly. I came from the engineering yeah. <laughs> world. Mm -hmm. um, here's the real question: Do you have any public speaking experience, and are you willing to represent the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee at public meetings, including speaking before the City Commission? Uh, that is actually one of my strengths. I've done a lot of public speaking. I've done hundreds of public speaking over the years when I was an insurance guy. I did a lot of different uh, public speaking at different uh, organizations uh, through our nonprofit. I've done a lot of organizations. I've done professional um, seminars and training on various technical topics. My company, uh, I have a battery design engineering company, so I've been asked to be guest speakers at conferences that, uh, that we go to up periodically. So, but it's something that I'm quite comfortable with and I do on a regular basis, so. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see how well you know the ins and outs of Oregon City. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I was advised not to call it the Portland Park, so I'm trying to really make sure. <laughs> All right, your next question is, what do you feel are the city's greatest parks and recreation deficiencies and or needs? That is a very good question that I, um, I, I, the only thing that I can come up with and think of is, is that we've had a lot of growth and changes. Mm -hmm. um, I have not seen or known that we have improved or uh, increased the number of parks um, over the years. So I could probably say some, from the standpoint of, uh, of probably some um, upscaling or new activities in the existing parks. Um, we have a lot of parks that have swing sets and baseball diamonds and soccer fields, um, but they're that's all there is. Um, maybe some other activities. Uh, I come from a, a mountain biking activity. Um, um, small uh, bike parks uh, are very popular in Lake Oswego. Um, I've worked with the city of, of Cascade Locks and we developed a park or a trail system for them a number of years ago. Um, a buddy of mine and Matt back here as well. Um, and um, I see that that is a common trend. Um, you look at Metro, Metro has property here. If you look at Metro, that's an area that they're expanding and offering. They've always had hiking, but they've never had biking trails. So <clears throat> that's an area that I can see that we might be deficient on. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee um, meets monthly. So this question is about your availability. It meets on the um, fourth Thursday of every month in the evenings. Um, would you be able to be available for that commitment over the next sure. few years? I live 2. Point, I think 1.2 miles from here, so, so <laughs> not a problem. I work for myself, so I control my own schedule. So. 1.2 miles. Sounds I like an engineer like talking. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Could be 2.5. <laughs> 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 um, this kind of goes back to the deficiency. I'm going off the list here. But back to the deficiency question. Um, 
we've heard a lot of um, input from the community that there's um, many areas within the city that are underserved by parks, many areas that are um, perceived as overserved or too many parks in the order. Um, mainly around uh, proposed new development areas, there's no there's no parks or there's how would you address that? How would you work with community come up with solutions? Um, another good question. Um, uh, the things that come to mind is, is that getting community involvement and understanding um, access for uh, people of, um, of color and other um, cultures and whatnot. Uh, I, I've been involved with or gone to a number of metro um, uh, meetings that they have for their property and one of the things that they get a lot of input back in the community to really try to understand what the community is really looking for. Um, so that might be an area that I can think of uh, is try to get more of the community involved and try to get feedback from the community on those types of things. Let's go back to your interest in advice as you talk about specifically mm -hmm. here. Uh, and just talking about the city as a whole, not only the park, you've indicated your knowledge of Metro's plans and Newell Creek and the transit system, which will include some bikes, might be the first one. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, but my question is, what do you think of bike uh, ease of riding bicycles throughout the city? Um, I ride a lot um, up and down Warner Parrot, and so I think our bike lanes are good. I mean, riding up, I drive up South Edward, and that's not good. No, that's, I, I used to ride up that uh, often, and that was harrowing, and, and so I don't know what's the old um, road that's closed now. I don't remember what that road is, um, but uh, um, I could say as a, from a road riding standpoint, Places that I generally tend to ride are, are, are decent. Um, I ride out in the country, but I'm an experienced cyclist. So if I were to say for families uh, and kids, I would probably say that we're deficient in a lot of areas. Warner Parrot tends to be a main dragway, and there's lots of access. Good, good bike lanes there. Um, but some of the um, the country roads, I don't think, are under the parks um, or the well, city's yeah. city's area that, that wouldn't really apply. Um, I think going up Lynn Avenue actually has really good bike lanes. Um, I'm sure that there's probably a few areas that could use some improvements. Um, I couldn't really say it off the top of my head. I mean, Malala Avenue, uh, I know that we're going and revamping Malala Avenue from Beaver Creek out to 213, so I'm excited to see what ends up happening with that. And I know that they're going to have more ac better access to uh, uh, bike lanes. I know on there. But from there <coughs> down, down to here, not so good, you know. <laughs> and it's a little steep and, and hilly to get up. So I think if you go over 12th, I think there's some more bike lanes, I think, over there. So. It's good to see you. You've been a mayor. You were a mayor a long, long time ago when, when I first moved here. <laughs> you, you and Alice, and then Alice, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. And always. Yeah. Do you have any questions for us? Uh, well, one thing I'm not overly. I mean, I I, I think it, uh, I talked to Don, but it was was it Phil who originally? Yeah, we worked yeah. on Phil. Yeah, and, I, and I'm really not. Uh, um, um, I'm kind of jumping in this, you know, um, two feet, a little bit blind, admittedly, and so I'm, I'm really curious of um, exactly what the advisory board uh, does. I know that there's you could, you know, advice for policy for the Portland parks, but uh, not beyond that, I don't really. You said Portland. No. Okay. <laughs> We're not setting policy, but it's more of recommendations for parks and rec department. I assume your folks um, to um, make recommendations. Yeah, to those um, those uh, the city commission at the end of the at the end of the day. But I think a good way to describe it, I think, and if anyone please jump in, we take deep dives. So we're the folks that look at the nitty gritty of the parks, and oftentimes um, citizens will come to us with questions 
or problems. We'll also listen to presentations were presented by Matters and for example, the boat ramp at Clackamas Park. We've had several presentations from engineering companies. It's a quandary for us right now because the boat ramp needs to be moved. Um, it's decaying where it is and it's causing problems um, on the river. So we take the deep dives and we cast votes. We have conduct votes um, within uh, certain parameters. We do have some leeway to make improvements or changes to the parks. But the boat ramp I use as an example because we may have a joint meeting with the city commission and they'll consult with us because we've taken a deep dive. Mm, okay. So anyone else have a better explanation of what we do? Pretty much it's a big party. We just have a lot of fun. There's cookies in there. Are all of you volunteers yourself? Yes, mm -hmm. we're all volunteers. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. We are? So I would be. <laughs> Wait a minute. This position oh, is uh, replacing. There's three three individuals. Three, three um, one is here. not here tonight, but okay. it'll be uh, my position and Mr. Cook's position. Okay. Okay, good. So, and we visit the parks quite a bit. Okay. Um, so we're very familiar with them. Good, good. So in my routes riding around town, I usually try to swing by and, you know, I've always been trying to like check off lists of parks mm -hmm. around, you know. Have you been to all of the parks? I don't think I've been to all of them. Uh, I was just informed of a new one off of uh, Foresight that I have ridden by, but I don't think I actually recognize that it was Maybe actually. Maybe <coughs> Park Place? Park, park Place. Mm. It was off Forsyth. Right I don't know if that's an empty lot pro property or a park. I'm not okay. really sure, to be honest. Hmm. Uh, not familiar with Park Place. It's close to Forsyth, but I don't yeah. think there's anything yeah. right on Forsyth. Okay. Yeah. Did you have a chance to review the uh, Parks Master Plan? Online? Yeah. 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 It's, it's the, the, on the books. On, on the, the books. books. Yeah. Okay. We've got a few parks. Parks is a home that has not developed that are now we're getting funding to develop us. Oh, okay. Okay. We went through our mountain biking group. We work with the Portland Parks on their master plan okay. over the last several years to help and come up with a uh, a plan so when that they do develop parks that they where appropriate, they can incorporate some kind of bike pass or a you know, um, place for kids to ride and things like that. So um, something that we got involved in. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very okay. much. Thank we you. appreciate Thank it. You. Look forward to working. Though. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> here. Hey, everyone. Could you turn your mics on? There's several mics on. Uh, we're not broadcasting, but we're doing the audio backup in there. Mm -hmm. Testing, testing. Sean, Sean is through his application, did he? No. Yeah. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Changed his mind. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah. There are three that we saw as withdrawals. So I don't remember which ones they were. We're going to follow the standard format. Each of us is going to ask a question. Uh, there could be a wild card question in there. So uh, we'll start off at the top on our left, my left, uh, Mr. Tory. Well, I'm going to revise my question a little bit for you. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of options to volunteer in Oregon City. Why your continued and renewed passion for always involved in parks? Why is that your hot, your hot one? It, it's a great question. I'm not sure I have a, a simple answer, but when I describe why I do this to other people, uh, friends, for example, and they'll ask, well, why don't you be a city commissioner or planning commissioner? I, and I, I like to think that this group is always doing really good things and it's not contentious and 
I have little kids at home still, and I feel like um, that I have something to give, and um, and I'm creating a better place for them. And so, while some people might want to sit and um, discuss a new housing development, I just don't feel like that's the best place for me to spend my time. Uh, this is this is a group that it, no matter what happens in the audience, everybody ends and we're happy. And, and you don't go home and stew about, oh, that was the worst meeting ever. <laughs> so from a personal standpoint, I, I leave the meeting satisfied that we did something good. Thank you. Have we been at the same meetings? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Has it> changed? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go off track, too. So at the moment, we're in transition. Mm -hmm. We're orienting Don, and about the time we get him perfect, he'll be leaving. <laughs> oh, which, that would take a lot longer than that. Okay. At which point we get to break in a new director. Um, what do you think is our number one priority that you'd like to see us accomplish in the next year? Well, in the next year, I think you need to uh, continue your number one goal, which is construct Tyrone w S. Woods Park. I mean, that's the simple answer. The 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 larger, broader answer is there's a priority list and, and we need to stick to the priority lists and not getting sidetracked with kind of little kind of the run of the mill uh, requests that come in. Seems like sometimes we get sidetracked and I do it at work too. Somebody will ask me for help and I spend three hours on that and I lost what I was supposed to do that day and now my boss is upset with me and, and it seems lately that the the parks department has been missing some of those key items that have been sticking around at the top of the list and other items kind of have been filling in underneath them and getting higher priority and if we're understaffed then we have to make the hard choices as to where we expend our energy either that or we need to hire more people and if that's not going to happen there's only so many hours a day so many staff members that can do it Thank you. <clears throat> I assume question number two is irrelevant. <laughs> right. yeah, he, he's, he's, You've been here before. He's schooled in the school. Okay. <laughs> Probably longer than me. Um, I'm going to just make one up. You, um, do you have any thoughts on the new, you, you said new housing development, you know, with the Beaver Creek project. Mm -hmm. Do you have any, I, I'm, and I'm, I'm unaware of where you live or what have you, but do you have any thoughts on the park? Um, facilities in that new project? Sure, absolutely. Uh, and I think it's a broader question of that el that side of the city. It, that side of the city is the most underrepresented represented, uh, portion of the city. There's, you know, I, I don't know the number, but probably a thousand homes off Caulfield Road and Glen Oak that have zero park. There's plenty of public space from, from the high school property and the college property, but that's not the same as a playground or a dog park or simply an open space that they're not pushed out of because it's football practice. And, and so the more that goes into that general area right now uh, <laughs> is only a benefit. I know probably 2006 or seven, we were putting planned unit developments in up in that area and planned unit developments required 20% attached housing and required some open space. And there's one neighborhood in there with 40 homes with a playground that's about the size of three lots. And that playground serves those thousand homes. And, and I remember at that time, the HOA came to Prack and said, can we give you this property? Because we're really serving everybody else and the park staff rightly so said, well, none of it's built to standards and it doesn't meet our minimum requirements of three acres. So it's, it's a challenge that we'll have to say no on this, but that's why we, we kind of kept with the commitment of, of buying property, which turned out to be Tyrone <coughs> Woods Park. Thank you. Okay. Sean, I'm going to go off script as well. Here's my question for you. How will you advocate to the city commission on behalf of parks and specifically deferred maintenance? Well, deferred maintenance, I think, is the, uh, the, the, the big question. I, I don't, even after all the meetings we've been in, I still don't know the answer. Um, and in fact, I think, uh, well, uh, 
Doug's the one I always think about because I can easily go into a meeting where Doug's there and I have an opinion on this side of the room and by the end of hearing Doug speak, I'm on the other side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know the wisdom behind all the funding, the proper funding yet. I, I've sat with you in the meetings. Is, is it a, a bond? Is it uh, increased taxes? Is it something on our water bill? And I don't know the answer to that. But I think that PRAC has to stay front and center. Uh, I, I've seen recently there's been several joint um, commission PRAC meetings, uh, those are rare. So I think that's really good progress because obviously they're paying attention. Uh, the, the chair in the past has always done an annual report. That's one more way to advocate for us. Um, and generally, if there's something on the agenda, having three, four, five PRAC members in the audience says a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, you're actually probably the first person that's qualified to answer this next question. <laughs> Sounds like you've been here, been on the committee for about, what, a decade or so previously? So in that time and up through now, what do you feel are the city's greatest parks and recreation deficiencies and or needs? You probably have quite a bit of hindsight on that. Well, I think it goes, it really goes back to her, um, her, her question, because I think until probably three years ago, if you asked me that, it was very easy for me to stay, to say, um, oh, I've been on PRAC a long time. I'm well first and we've got a two, maybe $3 million unfunded maintenance. Um, and then when the list came out and we're over 20 million, Frankly, I'm still absolutely shocked at it. I, I can't believe it. I, I'm, I'm surprised that I was that close to it and still didn't know. And that bothers me. Why did I not know? Why did we not know? Um, and, and so narrowing that down, refining it, I think is really important now. Uh, because I believe when you look at it, just saying 22 million isn't the right answer. I don't think that you could go out and tell the city right now, voters, we need $22 million. There's probably a, a high priority list, a medium priority list, and a wants list. And I haven't seen them broken down to that level yet. Hi, Hi. I, I'm one of the few, I think, who don't know you. <laughs> so what opportunities do you see that um, Oregon City has for the parks and recreation? Like, let's say money wasn't the issue, ha, ha, ha. But um, what, you know, what dreams do you have for the city for the parks and rec? I think that's an, an interesting question. I think Park Place, Beaver Creek concept plan build outs are, are exciting. When I think of some of the other new developments uh, that are over in, um, say, the Hillsboro Forest Grove area, and you can look at those new parks that have been planned and kind of come back to Oregon City and say, well, we've got this concept up there. That's to me how I, the, the pictures in my mind are those parks. So uh, I think you tie that with Newell Creek Canyon, uh, that build out, and I think all of a sudden you're ahead 10, 15 years pretty easily. Um, Sean, not using deferred maintenance as an issue or a, a topic, what during your last term was your single most frustrating point or topic? That's a good question. I think uh, uh, park construction. We've had, we've had two parks on our top of our priority list. Uh, I think I was chair of PRAC when we purchased the Tyrone Woods property in 2008. So when I think of the timeline, it's really frustrating to think I've got one kid halfway through high school and a new one that wasn't around then that still have never played on that park. Uh, we've, we've been out to uh, Filbert Run so many times with the neighbors there and then you kind of feel guilty after a while looking up at them in the eyes and say, saying, well, I know it's going to be next year or the next following year. So that, I, park construction, clearly, <clears throat> new developments paid their STCs. They deserve that expansion. That's what those fees are for. And sometimes I wonder if, if we don't do it in a timely manner, are, are we obligated? You know, is there a, a, I don't know this, but I feel like there's an, a legal ob obligation when you pay your STCs, you should get some return on that investment. And if we wait 10 or 15 years, it seems like we're not doing we're not serving them well. So the second part of that question, how do you foresee we overcome a topic or an issue like that? Well, I, I think PRAC's job is, is as a kind of an oversight committee 
it's our job when we when we hear staff talk about things in January and yeah, let's look at that in June or July. Um, I found in my own case that sometimes I don't remember in June or July to come back and say, did staff follow through with what they promised us? And I, I think that holds through with the city commission and the school board, everybody. You know, you wonder. Um, I, I think I almost want to take a notepad next time around and. You know, this is what was promised. Did we check it off? And I think it's easy to sit up here. A lot of times I go home and I throw my notes in the trash. And, and, and then we look at the agenda and the minutes and just follow that. But if it didn't show up on those, we, we kind of let it go. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are related questions. Um, I guess some of us have been on for a while are, are, are frustrated with some aspects of the process. Um, I'm trying to find out a way to ask this question without being direct, but I think the only thing I can do is be direct. We've had a couple of instances, at least, where the city commission has taken financial decisions that involve parks and facilities, and they never came to us. I don't necessarily feel the decisions were wrong, but I feel that we were out of the loop, and I just want to say, do you share that opinion? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> very heartfelt. In a very heartfelt way, those things kind of hit very close to home when we spend a lot of time here, we're invested in that. And um, it made me feel, why was I serving or volunteering? I, I could easily sit at home tonight and listen to my seven-year-old read her stories before bed that she's supposed to read for school. But I'm taking time away from that so I can be here to try to make a larger difference in the community. And when we're not, um, uh, our input isn't solicited, which kind of was the point, then that's very frustrating. Yeah. Sean, do you have any questions for us? Um, sure. When is the new parks director interviews occurring? It's a good question. In the future. <laughs> Sometime. We've decided, we've decided to keep Don for a while. My, my understanding, uh, when I was hired, I was hired on a, a three to five month basis. Oh, okay. So my assumption is that that encompasses the, the target for you know, recruitment, and interview process, offer, you know, negotiation, relocation, et cetera. Um, I understand that uh, the goal is to post the position right after, shortly after the new year. Um, my belief is that, you know, generally they're open somewhere between three weeks to a month. Um, in most jurisdictions, I don't know about this one. Uh, typically, they'll remain open, um, or the, you know, once they close, the process usually takes a month to sometimes two, depending on how many applicants there are, how much screening there needs to go through, and then they get to the final um, screening portions of it. Um, and then that you know might take another month. Uh, and then a lot of it depends on where the, the successful candidate comes from. If it's a local person, they'll need to give um, upwards of a month of notice. Um, frankly, you want that. You want to make sure that they're treating it as, you know, they're a professional, treating their previous job in a professionally courteous way and then moving forward. If they have to relocate across country or from a great distance away, sometimes it takes a little bit longer than that. So, I, I, you know, my opinion is, is four months would be a little optimistic at this point. <coughs> Five months is possible and, and six months is probably the, the outer edges of, of time needed for the process. So, Four to, four to five months, maybe. Great, thank you. That was really my only question. It, we don't see that in the paper and on the city's Facebook page, so I've been really curious. Yeah, I think process. part of it, too, is, of course, they're st still in the process of re choosing now a uh, uh, library director, and that, that's been a fairly long yeah. process in yeah. itself. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so, nice. so, that's today, yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. I think it's partially trying to make sure you get the right people in, too. Yeah. Was the director the position you thought you were interviewing for tonight? <laughs> <laughs> so I can go home right now. <laughs> no, 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 actually, Don has decided to he'll stay on as a right. volunteer. And I think we vote on this tonight, so just stay tuned. We'll let you know. <laughs> Shorten the process. Yeah. That's so, all. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And we've met before. Yeah.
I think I was in your interview. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Too shit. Too many Thanks, <laughs> Well, we, we now have an intermission. If anybody needs to use the restroom, get some refreshments, smoke them if you got them, whatever we need to do, feel free. I'm going to turn my mic off so that...
Good evening. Good evening. Brian? Correct. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for submitting your application. <coughs> so we will have a list of questions for you, and okay. we may have some that are off our list. So there may be some surprises. Okay. And what we'll do is each of us will ask you these questions. Um, <coughs> starting on my left, Troy. Uh, well, lots of options to volunteer in Oregon City, lots of boards, advisory committees, and so forth. So of all of those options that you saw on the website, what uh, was the main reason you said, i I got to be on PRAC, it's my number one choice? Um, so I've lived in Oregon City since 2015 now, and I have three children. Uh, two are, are my youngest are, is three and six, and so my middle one is six, uh, has been in soccer for the last couple of years, and so I've been a part of the, you know, kind of the using the facilities, and uh, she's been in the swimming uh, program at the at the Oregon City Pool and stuff, and so uh, I just kind of felt like I was uh, I have a relationship with with the Parks and Rec in that in that regard. But I did look at it, the other committees out there. I just felt this was a better fit for me. Good. Okay. Do you have any other experience having served on a board or a committee? Uh, so I worked. How many? <laughs> uh, no, this would be my my first. Uh, um, you know, local jurisdiction board kind of a thing. I work for the Oregon Secretary of State, and I'm uh, uh, basically the the PMO lead or the PMO manager uh, of our uh, IT department. Uh, so that's where my technical uh, background comes from. Um, and so I was um, primarily involved with standing that PMO up, um, establishing uh, what we call as a PRB or a portfolio review board where the division directors, uh, so, such as elections, corporations, archives, and so forth, meet on a monthly basis to review the, the, the projects that are in, in, in flight. So uh, I've been in that kind of a uh, committee uh, structure, basically, for the last few years. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Brian, uh, you're over in Caulfield. Yes. Uh, neighborhood. Correct. My, my neighborhood. Uh, this question is kind of toward that. Um, have you been um, involved in the Cockfield Neighborhood Association or also in the talks with the new Beaver Creek project plan? Um, and if you have or have any thoughts on that, how would you, what would you bring to the table for uh, the parks plan for that area, that development? Okay. Uh, no, I haven't been associated with, with the Neighborhood Association. My wife, um, uh, kind of keeps up on it. Uh, um, that neighborhood, the neighborhood I live in is, is uh, very, very social. Um, uh, everybody's actively involved. The holidays, you know, uh, Halloween and Christmas are very um, involved. Um, but my interest, I guess, in, in that is we've always talked about uh, that neighborhood is, is, is there's some green space over there and, we, and it'd be nice if there was some parks or- Where are you at? I'm sorry? Where are you at? Off of Yellow Lane. Yellow, Yellowwood Road, I'm sorry. Maple Lane. Oh. Oh, Maple Lane, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so they're doing some, some development over there, so I'm gonna be kind of keen interest into what, what kind of goes on over there. Okay. Brian, what issues currently facing our city are the most important to you? Um, you know, I try to keep up with the, the, the news in the local community uh, fairly often. And, um, you know, the traffic is, is, a, is a big one in terms of uh, there's been some accidents, um, people, you know, just right around here. Um, uh, so that's a concerning to me. Um, uh, I've, I've been a part of uh, the soccer club organization for my daughter and uh, my brother-in-law, his son was involved in the, in the, in the baseball program. Um, so he's informed me of some of the, the challenges uh, surrounding uh, some of the fields and, and, and how they're maintained. And, and um, so that, that interests me and, and, and uh, concerns me uh, about, you know, being able to, to assist and help with, with some of that stuff. Thank you. So considering your background, I've got this connectivity issue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, software, not network. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any uh, uh, public speaking experience, and are you willing to represent the PRAC at uh, various meetings and speaking before the city commission? Would you be comfortable with that? Yeah, I. Um, so I lead our portfolio re review board, uh, and so I feel very comfortable talking in in, in front of in front of a, a group of senior, you know. Uh, you know, the election structure of the state of Oregon, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the secretary of state. Um, uh, so I feel comfortable having those, those types of conversations and, and public speaking. Okay. Hi. This um, group meets the fourth Thursday of every month. What is your availability to meet regularly for the next few years on Thursday evenings? Uh, I have no plans on Thursdays. <laughs> so. Grace and Anthony. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, first, I have to say it's refreshing to see somebody knows what a scrum master and product owner is, <laughs> besides myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> what? Exactly. You want to term? Term yeah, here exactly. is, is software development, so yeah. it's, it's <laughs> nice to see that, that there. I'm a product owner myself, so. Um, well, I've got this connectivity. <laughs> <laughs> software, not network. <laughs> um, Brian, you, you have small children, and you've more than likely been to, the, to probably many of the parks. Um, What's your firsthand experience in terms of what your, your observations of deficiencies or things that are lacking in our parks? Uh, so I kind of uh, I documented that some of that in my application, but so you know I. <clears throat> I, my passion is, is trying to find efficiencies and, and, and improve things, hence Scrum. You know, it's, it's one of those things where you get rid of the bureaucracy and the documentation and, and you meet regu regularly, uh, inspect and adapt, you know, always trying to, to break through those, those uh, uh, log jams or, or uh, bottlenecks. Um, so, you know, I, one of the things I'm going to uh, look at as, as, a, as a member of this committee is how can we leverage technology to make things more efficient? Um, you know, um, Wi-Fi at the ballparks. I don't know. Um, you know, a, a, an integrated website for the for the community to uh, be able to sign up for 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 all these various programs. Um, uh, you know, maybe uh, <clears throat> you know, scoring system to uh, to promote uh, you know the competitiveness of the of these teams that are out there. Make that more uh, available to the residents of the city. Um, just engage people. Yeah, you know, get get the community engaged more in, in, the, in the use of the parks and recs, and, and feel like they're they're a part of, uh, you know, the community more. Thank you. Relates a little bit to Troy's question, but what do you perceive are the uh, outside the technology aspects? What do you see uh, the parks deficiencies in your neighborhood area? Um, you know, one of the things I I liked, uh, so when we were shopping for a house before we moved here, um, one of the things I, I liked over in, in the, um, uh, not the Clackamas, but the, uh, on the, on the, on the north side of Clack, I can't remember the name of the community now. Anyway, they had parks right in, right in the, uh, in the neighborhood, like, you know, um, little playgrounds. Um, I think that um, goes a long way to promoting community and and um, providing a return on investment that I think that the taxpayers will find beneficial. Um, you know, so I, I want to... Um, you know, try to focus on those kinds of things that I that I think that the community wants to see some value for, uh, you know, the money that they're paying for their taxes, and trying to find those types of opportunities, um, building more more playgrounds and parks and and um, being creative. Uh, one thing that I, I I mentioned in my application is is we don't always need to recreate the wheel to come up with some of these ideas. What are some of the other committees around at, for other jurisdictions, you know, California, Washington, what are they doing for their parks and recs? Can any of those ideas apply here? Could, you know, instead of taking, you know, trying to recreate the wheel and, and invest this time and, and, and how to make things better, what kind of community or, or relationship building are we doing with other parks and recs committees and, and can we leverage some of their experience and, and uh, you know, expertise? Mm -hmm. 
Brian, do you have any questions for us? Um, you know, one thing I, I uh, uh, so I've researched uh, and reviewed the, the Parks and Recs uh, committee page. Um, uh, one thing that I was I was trying to find because it was mentioned in the bylaws was the, was the master plan. I didn't see that any of that information out there, and that, I'd be curious to know what what that all entails. Okay. <clears throat> it needs to be updated, <laughs> yeah. but, but it is out on the pub, public website. Okay, mm -hmm. you might yeah. have to dig for it a little bit. Yeah, I probably okay. have to dig for it. Um, I think if you go on to or orcity.org and then just in the primary search bar, right at the root of the the landing page there. Oh, okay. You can type in Parks Master Plan. Okay. Yeah, but it does need to be updated. Um, any other questions for us? <laughs> um, what is what is the focus of, of, of this committee? What's what's the big issue that this committee is working on now? We're the nitty gritty people. We take the deep dives and we try um, to familiarize, familiarize ourselves with the neighborhoods, their needs, and the parks themselves, what may be lacking, what may be great. Um, we serve as an advisory board to the city commission. At times, we may have joint meetings with them, and because we're in the thick of it, they may consult with us. <clears throat> Maybe um, to be a little bit more specific, I, I think one of the, at least for me anyway, one of the biggest um, issues or our topics um, for me has been the deferred maintenance um, issue. We have upwards of $20 million plus dollars in deferred maintenance right now for parks. Mm -hmm. And trying to find a funding um, mechanism for that has been challenging. It's still ongoing. Okay. I have no more, other, no more questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. in uh, from Beaver Creek to Maple, that side from mm -hmm. Beaver Creek to Maple Lane. Mm -hmm. So it's not, not all of Maple Lane. Uh, so probably not the west side or the, southwest. They're up to, when you go down Maple Lane, mm -hmm. they've annexed a whole bunch to the right, a little bit to the left, almost <coughs> to the trailer court. I was going to say, the trailer court, yeah, it's you know, like in. just a little past Holly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Brent. Yes. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks, really for, thanks for your interest in our group. Absolutely. So we have a standard list of questions, and what uh, the format is that each of us will ask you one of these questions, but there could be surprises in there as well. Sure. So uh, we'll start on my left, and starting with Troy. So um, lots of different options and things you could do in Oregon City to volunteer and to be on boards. What is your passion with uh, Parks and Rec that, that brought you to apply to this one? My passion for Parks and Recreation is I was a Parks and Recreation major as an undergraduate at the University of Oregon. It was back then it was called Leisure Studies and Services. But I innately and profoundly believe in the value of recreation and the, how it impacts our lives and individuals' lives in such a positive way. If you look at the root of the word recreation, it means to recreate yourself. And when we, re I, I truly, honestly believe that recreation is the foundation for healthy societies. Thank so, you. yes. Um, do you have any previous experience on a board committee? I do not. <laughs> You've escaped that? <laughs> I've escaped that. I was trying to think, Ryan, in my professional life, not really. I'm, I can't really think of any board or committee that I've served on. Okay. What issues currently facing our city are most important to you? Ooh, that's a big and a good question. For me, that I want to make certain that Oregon City, I would like to see the development of the project of the falls path to Willamette Falls. I think that that will be a very big 
I think it will enhance the city in a multitude of ways. I am glad that the paper mill was recently, I believe it was sold to the Grand Ronde tribe mm -hmm. and that they are making certain that their first priority is that they have their rights restored to be able to access the falls for their lamprey harvesting and everything. Ultimately, I would like to see development of the paper mill and so it's just not sitting there i think that there is opportunity to develop it in a environmentally and conscious way that will impact the lives in the city in a positive way additionally derek i would like to see more parks developed in oregon City. <laughs> okay. okay i'm going to ask you several questions okay small questions hopefully easy you're a resident of Park Place. Correct. Is that correct? Have you been to Park Place Park? Yes. Um, very selfish. Um, I also live in Park Place. <laughs> nice. And what would you do to improve Park Place Park? That's a good question because there's one of the things we might be able to do is it, maybe expand the playground a little bit for kids. It's kind of small in my opinion. And I think that more families will be moving to Park Place mm -hmm. Park with the new houses that are being built. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I haven't seen in Park Place Park that when I was living in Portland I really liked is we would have concerts in the park. And I know it's a small park, but it would be a great venue to either show part or films in the park in the summertime or maybe have small concerts in the park in the summertime. I'd like to see the city be more involved in activities in that park and bring those activities to that park rather than just sitting there. Okay. Do you own a dog? Sadly, it's on my goal for 2020. I had a golden retriever for 14 years and had to put him down about two years ago and I miss him very much. And so I'm looking at getting a dog in 2020. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Uh, um, Park Place Park is a dog park. It's one of our, one of three off-leash dog parks. Okay. And from what I understand and what I hear, everything has been very positive and actually we're the most successful dog park Good. within the city. And that the, um, that's based on cleanliness and uh, no issues. We haven't had any issues. So I'm there quite frequently with my dog. So excellent. Hope to see you again. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm assuming like there is bags for picking up yes. dog yes. poop and everything. And presently there. there's a park host who okay. will be wintering over, which is very nice. That explains the trailer that I see yes. up there. Okay. Yeah. So very nice, very welcoming presence. Okay. So thank, thank you. you. Well, uh, reaching back to your uh, education and leisure studies yes, sir. and recognizing that you've only lived in uh, Oregon City for three years, I'm going to ask you a kind of a loaded question. Um, what do you feel would be our greatest um, parks and recreation deficiencies and or needs uh, at this particular time? Or what, what have you been able to identify in the short time that you've been here? So that is a loaded question. And I sometimes wonder, Jeff, if all the demographic population of Oregon City is, is represented in terms of the parks and what their needs are. Um, when I was living in Northeast Portland, a, they developed a futsal park because the, Sp the Hispanic population play, uh, like to play futsal quite a bit. Um, and to be honest with you, that's one of the questions I have is what percentage of the demographic of Oregon City is represented by the parks in terms of who uses them? I would say, you know, there is... What, there's a park right up here, and it's just kind of an empty lot with a couple of basketball hoops in it. And I look at that, and I, look, and I say to myself, that could be developed to be something so much more. So I think that some of the parks need to be looked at. I don't know if a study needs to be done, or, but some type of analysis or discovery session of how we can make our parks more popular for people, more of a destination for people to go to, because parks are where the memories are created. Mm -hmm. um, who's using the parks? These types of things. So I don't know if like, we need necessarily more parks per se, but it's the quality of parks. Okay, very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Before we leave that, are you talking about a park on 12th Street or do you know? 
I think so. It's um, it's I believe it's on a hill. It's up by 12th Street. Yeah. I just saw it the other day. I just want to tell you that actually a Girl Scout uh, group is taking on that particular project, has gotten funding from the city, has actually done design work on that particular park. Okay. Is that Ladder Rat? Ladder Rat Park. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there's a plan for it, uh, a master plan, I guess you'd call it for that, for just that park. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First off, go Ducks, and I think we were in the leisure study program at U of O about the same time when I was looking at your resume. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I, I was think so I might sad be when they cut older, it. But, um, <laughs> so but, um, Al, were you really? Yeah, but I was there a little bit before you guys, I think. Okay. <laughs> Do you guys remember Dr. Larry Neal? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, I took PE. Is that kind of? <laughs> no, I don't. no, that's okay. All right. But well, there's a lot of ducks in this room. Yes. Okay. So so, Chris, do you have a question? <laughs> so, I'll give you an easy question. So, in terms of availability, for the, um, if you were selected to be on this committee, it would be um, the fourth Thursday of every month okay. um, for the next three years of your life in the evening. Right. Would you be available? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, Brent, um, we have heard a lot of feedback from um, not just members of, of this committee, but um, members of the community about areas of the city that are, they feel is underserved by parks. Um, Park Place is one of those. Um, Beaver Creek Corridor is one of those. Um, and there's, there's some passion around that. Um, unfortunately, there's funding issues about land banking and things like that. How would you address that? How would you work with the community to come up with solutions for finding um, facilities and parks for those underserved areas? That's a great question. I think in my limited knowledge, Chris, I would have to basically do more research and more studying into those underserved communities and to see how they are underserved. Um, I would want to Assuming that they are underserved, I think one of the things to do or to help in this discovery is look at, you know, the population out there, who lives out there, um, what type of funding do we have for these parks, and maybe have some um, town hall forums to talk with the people in terms of what type of parks they might like to see out there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll come to uh, this new question. You don't happen to have relatives that own a business in Oregon City, do you? No, sir. Okay. Uh, there are heifer camps in the city. Are you? Really? Yes. Oh, yes, there are. And I will also tell you that my parents' best fr friends when I was young were heifer camps that lived in, in Portland, Oregon. In Portland? I work for they are the same one and the same. Uh, they, they actually, yeah, but they're not the same people. The next generation. Uh, okay. What my parents said. But that, that said, I, I have no connection with you. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I am unaware of any haver camps that own a business in the city of Oregon. Oh, okay. Well, or the city of Oregon City. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I noticed your interest, particularly in outdoor things. Are you aware of? Uh, the Metro Regional Government's uh, ownership of, of open spaces here in Oregon City? No. Okay. You might want to look, look at that because uh, particularly they have two major purchases of open spaces. One is Newell Creek Canyon, that's as you're coming up Highway 213, where they are opening a trail system there. First loop, I think, is going in this next year. And another is in Kanima Bluffs, and that's something like 320, 340 acres of land. These are open space lands. So um, I just let you know that I just noticed that you moved in in 2016, so you might not be aware of that, but uh, it offers great potential for the residents of Oregon City. That is very exciting news because I would like to trail run and I always go over to Forest Park because it's such a nice system and so many miles of trails, and I was thinking it would be great to have a trail system here. It won't be that big. Lots of elevation. Yeah. 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 is nice for that, for trail running. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay. okay. Brent, do you have any questions for us? Actually, I do have a couple of questions. Please. So. 
this might tie into what you just asked, Doug. That I saw on the last agenda the trails master plan, and I was wondering what this is, um, what type of use does this tie into what we were just talking about with Metro? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I don't even know if that's something on our at the top of our priority list, the trails master plan. We're adding the McLaughlin um, Kanima oh. Lake when we have the money. We yeah, just planned we have an the addition money. to it. Yeah. Um, it's kind of always there, and in fact, we've got it as a topic on the, the rest of the meeting. Mm -hmm. The point of it is, in our dream world, okay. <laughs> it's all the connectedness within the different parts of the city and bit by bit, they, they're being developed. Okay. And so the newest leg, we just need the money. Yes, <laughs> and that would go from very roughly the Highland Still House to the Kanema neighborhood. Okay. To those open, to connecting to the metro um, open spaces that yeah. Doug had mentioned. Because the boundary for the Oregon City is so large, and it would be great to see these trails connect. And I understand that some of the challenges are private land use and everything. So hearing about Metro and is... One of, uh, one of the things on our goal list, too, is to get trail signage. We have that some of the smaller parks have trails that you can access from one, from one area to another, but they're not signed, so a lot of people don't know about them. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that's a great point. Um, do I have time for a couple more questions? Sure. sure. So the funding, I was curious as to parks and recreation, what percent of the city budget, or rather what is the major source of funding for parks and recreation? I, I wouldn't know the percentage right off the top of my head. But General fund and not enough. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's typical. We're, we're looking at two issues. One is deferred maintenance, which is huge over here the other is understaffing which is historic that we have had one work session with the city commission and got one employee um that needs to be looked at further okay yeah just um, a little more on the topic so the deferred maintenance fund or amount right now is is it 22 20 somewhere yeah. it's it's a significant amount and we've been yeah. struggling to find um funding mechanisms for that and it's ongoing yeah. and then of course the O&M budget year to year so might have to start a kickstarter page <laughs> yeah. not, a bad idea. not a bad idea hold a sign behind um, you for more people yeah. You. <laughs> yeah so like with any other buckets of money within the city sdc funds with new developments but um, just as any other, you know, um, committee or body within the city, those funds, for example, um, new development in a certain neighborhood doesn't mean that those SDC funds will be applied to that neighborhood, could go someplace else. Okay. About $5,000 per house, roughly. Okay. Per new home. Per new home. Very roughly. All right. So after I applied for this, I saw on the front page of the Oregon City News the Memorial Tyrone S. Woods Memorial Park construction delayed. Yes, sir. Uh, has this been a big topic mm -hmm. for tonight? No. Okay, I saw it was on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I guess my question is, I mean, these things happen. I, would, but I was more curious as to why the funding had problems and if there were any lessons learned. That's why it's on the agenda tonight. <laughs> We're going to learn the answers to your questions. <laughs> you can go home and watch us on, keep on cable TV. Or you can stick around. Or you, or you can stick, stick around. around. You can stay and listen. You can stay and listen. We are in a transition. Um, so Don Robertson is our interim director. Okay. And um, we'll, we'll be discussing that tonight. So he's c catching up to speed on all of those. Okay. Um, trying to catch up to speed. Yeah, <laughs> trying to catch up to speed. And, and now I don't have all the answers to <laughs> all the questions. But... You're the gentleman who called me yesterday. Yes, I did. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, thank you. Uh, that's my questions right now. Um, any final questions for me? Yeah. Anyone else? Nope. Okay. Thank you very much for thank your interest. You. Absolutely, my pleasure. And thank you. <coughs> I really enjoyed this. Thanks, Brent. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, next steps would be, I'm sorry, I didn't ask this. I meant yeah. to. No, that's fine. Um, what we'll be doing is taking a vote, mm -hmm. and then the committee will be, uh, the applicant will be assigned by the mayor. Okay. 
Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Next January, nice you. right? Yes, January. Yeah. Nice meeting you too, Good night, everybody. Good, Good night. night. Go Ducks. Thank you. Go Ducks. <laughs>
Are you having deja vu? <laughs> hey. Is that a drink? <laughs> uh, it could be. <laughs> Good evening, Ms. Gifford. Hi, Lisa. How are you? I'm doing well today. Thank you so much for coming tonight. So we have the standard format. We have a list of questions, but there may be surprises. And we've been kind of having some surprise <laughs> questions and winging it a little bit. OK. So uh, standard format, we'll go down the, the row here, and we'll start with uh, Mr. Troy. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Troy. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, lots of options in Oregon City as far as boards and committees and such. Why choose <coughs> Parks and Rec as your number one? Because we're the fun committee. Um, yes. Yeah, I said that cause, earlier. Because um, I work with students all day long as a substitute teacher, and I've been doing that for over 20 years. And I see parks as a place where you know we need to have available for the children of the city. Um, I talk to those high school kids all the time, and they're always wanting more skate parks and, and things. Um, so that's important. Um, our swimming pool is important as a recreational facility. We also have our senior center, so we're dealing with the other end of the age spectrum, which I am getting closer and closer to. and <laughs> um, and. So having those things available for our citizens is, is important to me. Um, I don't want to serve on a budget committee. Um, and it's just the one that speaks to my heart is parks, recreation. Thank you. Okay, so on those off-the-wall questions, uh, <laughs> one of the things we've been discussing tonight is sometimes things have stayed on the to-do list for many years. I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry. Um, sometimes things stay on the to-do list for several years. Um, what's left over from when you were on the committee before that you'd like to see come to be? And that's exactly why I threw my hat in the ring. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> um, so... When we started, we were just starting to look at that land on uh, Glen Oak of uh, putting in a park and walking through the berry bushes and <clears throat> trying to envision what's going to happen. And I served on the committee for the Glen Oak Master Plan. Um, and to see the possibility of that come to fruition. Um, the the dog parks, the the temporary, let's see how these off-leash areas work. Um, there's really not been a lot of follow-up on that, but that started when I was there. And I want to see where that is and, and if we can expand that more or have more than just one fenced dog park once the Tyrone Woods um, park comes online. Um, there's the Filbert Run Park, which I've seen in lots and lots of uh, weather, and um, seen how that park changes due to the weather. And so I'm interested to just get that park completed for those neighbors who have waited so long and put so much effort into it themselves. Um, I think I was on PRAC right when the um, playground was burned down at, at Park Place. Mm -hmm. And I've been disappointed to see that that hasn't been finished, but it's kind of fun to see that that is going to get completed. Um, so those are just some of the things on it. And then, of course, the big elephant in the room is always Clackamas. Clackamas Park. Um, what are we going to do with that RV park? Where are we going to put the boat ramp? Um, when I was on the committee, we looked at a big master plan for the RV park, and it was beautiful, and it had trees, and and you know it was going to be lovely, you know, a few few a few less spaces, but it and the master plan got done, but never went anywhere. We didn't have the funds to complete it, but I think part of it was nobody really had the heart to put all that money into a area that floods every year. So we need to think outside the box about what we can do, um, where we can move the uh, recreational vehicle park, um, where is the best place for the boat ramp, what makes the most sense for the city to be putting their money into, and making sure that we have safe facilities for all of our citizens. Thank you. 
Derek, I've not had a chance to meet you. And I look... Mm, vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> I believe you answered every question on the sheet right there. <laughs> I am not kidding. I'm looking at it going, nope, nope. Um, obviously, you've been here uh, a lot longer than me. Um, what's, the most, what's the most important issue to you? Um, of all those that you just described, and, and, and do you have a plan that you would like to, you know, maybe you've thought about over the last year, I believe, of, how, you know, what, you know, you've had some time to dwell on it. Clackamas Park. Yeah. Um, the, the RV park for that um, and the boat ramp. Um, that is going to be a real jewel for the city if we do it right. Um, or if we just kind of muddle along and keep what we have been doing and, and have a boat ramp that actually right now works for um, kayakers and, and those who float down the river in inner tubes as an exit point. But um, I, We talk about it every month, I think. <laughs> and, and you know, that's an important thing to have, too. So um, that's kind of um, a, a big part of where my heart is. Um, uh, and of course, the, the trees, to the, the tree that's going to be coming down at Library Park um, because of the Dutch elm disease. Mm -hmm. I used to live next door to Library Park before we re-envisioned the library when it was called the Carnegie Center yep. mm -hmm. and was kind of a coffee shop mm -hmm. at, the, at the time. <laughs> and when the Dutch elm disease was first noticed in those trees and the arborists were taking a look at it and I would go over and we'd, I'd talk to the arborists and, and they would talk about what they were going to be doing to try to save the trees and which trees need to ha needed to come down. And, and, um, and I would go over and, and I would know which trees were coming down when, and I would go over and hug those trees and spend some time listening to their stories, because that's who I am. Um, the roots in this community go pretty deep. My parents moved, in, moved here. Um, I was 26 years old when my parents moved here, but you know where mom and dad are? That's where home is. So even though I was living out in Forest Grove, mom and dad are in Oregon City, and so that was kind of home. And I've always loved this town. So to get back to your question, though, <laughs> the, the big thing is not only wanting to see Tyrone Woods Park, the completion of that, but what's going to happen at Clackamat? Joyce, as I'm sure you're well aware, we have a budget deficit. Yes. And, and I'm sure. And I, in fact, I know that you're comfortable being an advocate with the city commission, um, to the city commission, being an advocate for the parks. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you would do to encourage the city commission to devote more of their budget to the parks? Is there any other ideas that you would have or suggestions for PRAC? Um, like I said, I'm, that's why I don't want to be on a budget committee. You know, <laughs> I'm not good about asking for funds, as, as some people are, and some people have to do. Um, that um, I have no silver bullet for that. I know that the Parks Foundation um, was originally formed to try to to obtain some of those funds to help with the park. It hasn't done its job as well as it, as it could. Mm -hmm. um, and the Parks Foundation is it, um, it's still trying to find its roots. Yes. Okay. And, but what I would really ideally love to see is that the Parks Foundation working with PRAC and working with the city to really triage what's the most important thing that needs to be done. And then let's go out and try to find some of those funds that, that we could use to cover those expenses without really knowing what's the most important thing. You know, just, I know we're just treading water right now, you know, or just trying to keep the grass mowed if the grass is dry enough to mow, because if we don't want to get our tractors struck, stuck in the mud, which is another expense. Um, but there's repairs that need to be made to sidewalks so that they're wheelchair accessible. Um, there's 
again, I don't know enough yet of what, if you guys have looked at, at a, a triage of what needs to be done, what, what are our top needs, um, because it's always the squeaky wheels, okay? And, and I know that um, there are certain areas in the town that have gotten, I feel like, have gotten more of the money because they come in and they represent themselves. And, and it's kind of, it's fun to see people take a project and a passion like Ladderette's Army the the passion that they have for redoing Ladderette Park and going out and getting the funds for that. So I guess what we really need is to have an army for each park um, that's going out and looking for those funds. But um, the other thing is, you know, um, it's just like people drive on the roads and they realize that they have to pay a fee to drive on the roads. And, and the people that use the park sometimes don't really think about mm -hmm. the costs of what it takes mm -hmm. to keep those parks going. And I think educating the, the citizenry of, of how much does it cost to take care of the parks. And um, Try to get out there and get people to rent the shelters, bring in a little money, and I know that um, maybe we need to have another RV dump station because that one is usually, there's a big long line of people backed up to use it, and I think it makes a little bit of money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Hi, Jeff. Hi. So I made a notation here that you're a tree hugger. Yes. <laughs> and, and I guess going back to Troy's question, um, the Natural Resources Committee would have been kind of my second choice. Uh, so are we going to have problems with you hugging trees? And, you know? um, no, because I understand that trees have lives oh, okay. and that they need to come down. And judicious thinning of trees and replanting of trees yeah. is an important part of the health cycle. You know, when I was, I, I was a landscape architect, when I was taking landscape architecture in school, one of our first projects assigned to us was to go out and sit in front of a tree and talk to it. And that was probably the most uncomfortable thing I think I ever did. But, <laughs> you know, it was, it was when, it, oh, when it spoke to you, right? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, but now that you're retirement, you look back and it serves you well. It's told me what to do. You know, when, when you take the time to lean against an old tree and think mm -hmm. about its history, it does speak to you. It does. When you reflect on yeah. all of the things that that tree has seen, um, it's, it's important, but also knowing that they don't last forever yeah. and that that memory then needs to get shared. That's right. And that's kind of where I go with it. I do have one, one question uh, that came to my mind. Uh, given your past experience on uh, the, uh, the PRAC, um, is there any one particular or maybe a couple of things that you were um, deeply involved with that, that uh, you were, how should I say this, that you were happy with the outcome or, you know, something that, that really spoke to your heart when you were on, on the, the commission that, that you were able to see through uh, to fruition or anything, any experience well, like it's that? It's not to fruition yet, mm -hmm. but to, to be um, on the, the subcommittee working on the master plan for what's now Tyrone Woods mm -hmm. Park um, was was pretty phenomenal. Uh -huh. um, you know, going out there and, and walking the grounds um, with the architects and, and realizing the areas, you know, where there's usually standing water and where we're going to need to put in bridges or areas that we need to avoid building anything. Um, and then just envisioning the best places and but and that one also included putting in roads and putting in a parking lot and there were um, you know a lot of factors um, that we had to consider on that yeah. and the the public meetings that we had there listening to the public about the things that they wanted listening to the neighborhood about the things that they wanted to see at that park um, it was it was good, yeah. and um, I 
enjoyed that, and I'm really hoping that in the next few years, 10 years, we'll get that park completed. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes things need to be done in stages, yeah. and that's important too. But again, we need to, to, to triage what's the most important thing to be done. So where do we start? And as the Parks Foundation talks about, where's our, the best bang for our buck? Yeah. You know, what can we do that's going to make an impact now so that once that's done, you can, you know, look for your next project. And it's more than just pulling ivy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Alicia, hi. Hey, hi. We haven't met before, though you look very familiar. <laughs> I think I've seen you around town. So um, for Oregon City Parks and Rec, what do you think they're doing well? What are the positives that you see um, happening in the city currently? Okay, um, I think that the committee does um, a good job of communicating, um, at least for those of us who, who look online, okay, about um, what's going on in, in, in the city. And I know that the, the cemetery is a park. And so the, the great things that are happening at our Pioneer Cemetery um, that the community is getting involved in um, is is one of the jewels that we have are um, the, the Pioneer Center and the services that they do um, is another jewel in our city and, and what it does. So I think right now we're doing a pretty good job of that. Of course, you know, there's always more that can be done and, and um, I'm looking forward to um, meeting with Don and getting some of his ideas about where he sees some of the parks where we're going, um, but it's more than just parks, you know, where that that the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee, that Don's job covers so much more than just playground equipment, and um, so that's important. Thank you. Hi, Chris. Um, whether it be your time on PRAC previously or your um, hiatus or your time away from PRAC, what has been the single most frustrating issue or topic in terms of parks and recreation? Um, besides lack of funds, um, so the, the frustration was um, seeing people come in every month wanting to hear about what's going to happen to their park, Filbert Run, mm -hmm. and really not getting any answers. And, and watching them get so frustrated with delay after delay after delay when it seemed to them that the funds should have been there through the SDCs. And the the expenditure of SDC funds, um, I think that the big one that I think happened right after I left the committee, I'm not sure that the, that Mrs. Jubb's house was purchased when I was still on the committee. Um, that's the house that's right at the gate to the Pioneer Cemetery. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, I call it Mrs. Jubb's house. I know where she's buried over in the cemetery. I go and visit her too. I sit and we talk and we chat. Um, <laughs> and so the expenditure of, of funds to purchase that, I didn't think was the a best use of those funds that something else, although I'm very, very happy that that particular piece of property is now um, in the city coffers. I thought it always should have been, and, and, I'm, and I'm glad that that happened. But I'm just not always, you know, I think that was the best way it could, but now we need to make, you know, the best of what we have. And then there's all these changes now with the first street property where we're moving some of the park equipment to, so it's not gonna be stored at the cemetery anymore. So there's all of those decisions to make. So what kind of facilities do need to be built next to the cemetery? Um, and 
all of those those new things. That whole first street thing, I think, is pretty exciting for the city. I'm so glad that it happened, mostly because I didn't like public works down on Center Street as it was, and so to for them to have that, and, but also have that available for for parks. It's kind of good. Thank you. Well, now you're bringing up two of my frustrations. <laughs> yeah, you, you alleged not, not the best choice. The fact that neither of those two decisions that was made by the commission never came to prac. Mm -hmm. We were not asked our advice on the purchase, the use of them, and so forth. And it's not that I think they were bad purchases. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it was purchased on that, my very last turn here, and it was it, it took us all by surprise. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. that's right. Absolutely. Um, we thought, whoa, wait a minute. But, you know, in a, in a way, sometimes those things happen at the last minute, like the opportunity that came up the one time to purchase the, the mill property that, you know, it, that the city and the county and Metro tried so hard to put something together to get at the last minute. And, and those kinds of things are really hard to put together. And sometimes opportunities come up and you don't have time to think about them. It's one, sometimes they're now or never. Because if, if we don't get it, a developer's gonna get it, and, and what are they gonna put in there? You know, um, so it, it makes sense in some ways that the property was purchased, but again, it, it just felt like it was um, done without a whole lot of <clears throat> consultation from, from us, from you, yeah. Yep. So, it was us. <laughs> did somebody else have another question? Yeah, well, no? yeah, you know, it's not a question, but no. you made the comment on the Carnegie Center. I just want to mention it was more than a coffee shop. It was an artist venue for arts artists to put things up, and also a children's museum. So, yes, yes, that's there. Several things going there. Yes. But. I didn't have any kids at the time, so I didn't go downstairs much. I just wanted to have coffee because it was so convenient. No, you, you've answered so many of the questions, but I will ask you one other. What would your two top priorities be? I mean, you mentioned, you mentioned issues and frustrations and things you were happy about, but what would you put as your two t top priorities coming in? Top priorities coming in? For us to deal with in the, in the next two-year period. What would be your two? What would you be the, your the two? top priorities coming in? The two two priorities that you would want to list to be done. Um. And and again, I haven't watched all of your meetings, but I haven't really seen where um, you've received um, a triage from the city as to what are the most important things that need to happen. Okay, and um, to take a look at that list and. Um, find out how the Parks Foundation can help with that or, you know, how we can uh, nudge the city commission to nudge staff to get some more money um, to take care of some of the deficits that, uh, that we're faced with. Um, so let's see, two things. Um, okay, so there's another park that's kind of near and dear to me that um, kind of goes along with the whole Clackamas Park, and that's the uh, the trail, the Clackamas Trail that goes um, up to the Gladstone Bridge. And that trail is so well used um, by cyclists, by um, dog walkers, by runners, um, and it's falling into great disrepair. Yeah. And um, so the, I, I see that as, as one of the jewels of the city that's, that's gotten kind of tangled, not just with the ivy, but, but again with the, with the condition of the sidewalk. And um, I know a lot of that is all dependent upon what was going to be going in at, at the cove. Um, so we're all waiting to see what the developers were going to do, and now that's all in limbo. Mm -hmm. But I don't want the trail to be put in limbo um, for waiting to see what's going to happen to the property, because right now, I you know some of some of the sidewalk is dangerous for bicyclists, mm -hmm. and we don't want that. Um, so just 
keeping ourselves aware of the condition of what we have and where it needs to go. Does that did that answer your question, Doug? Because I right. couldn't you hear the question. You answer my question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Joyce, do you have any questions for us? Um, well, I know that you guys interviewed a lot of really good quality people here tonight. And um, when I threw my hat in the ring, when I found out a couple people that were going off of, off of this commission, I thought, wow, you know, that's, that's a lot of history in this committee. But yet... When I was reading over, just because uh, I only got a little tiny bit of some of the names of other people that were that were put in, um, that they were some really good quality people. And if I just want to let you know, if you think one of them has some great ideas, please, please put them on the committee and not me. You know, I've had my opportunity to be here, um, but one of the reasons I really want to be on this committee is because I am near and dear to the Parks Foundation, and some of the people on the Parks Foundation are no longer going to be on the committee. So that conduit needs to remain open. Mm -hmm. If I am not on the committee, then I, and nobody from the Parks Foundation is is there? I know Karen represents the cemetery and the park. I actually belong foundation. now. I just have to show up at a meeting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Been yeah. A, you've been uh -huh. sending a status. I just need yeah. excuses. Like an empty chair but, um, <laughs> so, so right, Karen. So I better show up at meetings. <laughs> yes, and but to make sure that that line of communication doesn't get severed um, is real important. Um, but. You guys, again, you've seen a lot of, of some new faces. I don't know if there's any old faces that came up tonight to, to ask to be back on the committee. And, and um, just thank you for the opportunity to serve. And thank you so much for the work that you have done. Um, because it's important. And sometimes, because we don't get some of the funds and because we don't have any bright lights, um, we get overlooked a bit, but are they going to be putting lights in down at the pickleball court? Uh, Didn't they know that the they were looking we for know. some funds. They're looking for grants and stuff. For doing that. that. So we so tried to get enhancement grant money, but didn't get it. Yeah, there wasn't okay. enough money to All go right. around. So no. try again, another time, looking for another Ooh. grant, because that's what you have to do. If you don't get one, you just hold your head up high and keep walking forward and find another bucket to put your hat in and see what comes out. Okay. All right. Thank Did you, you have any nice. questions for me? No. Okay. My, my job is taking a lot of notes. Three <laughs> <laughs> minutes over here. Thank you so much thank for you. your service and thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate right. it. Okay. Have one more after me, I think, All right? And you, I, don't know. I saw Kelly come in, but I haven't seen anybody else. Yeah. You said who come in? Yes. Kelly from uh, planning. Do you have? Where's the tells what? I don't know if he came. I haven't seen anybody. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody. Pardon? Doug. I, I didn't see our other candidate. Oh, Denise is going to look for him. Doug, my understanding on the Jub property, in a discussion of the retreat, it was pointed out that that property had come up several times, and every time it came up, the price went up. <clears throat> and Dan finally said, all it's ever going to do is go up, buy it, which is why it never came here. It was just basically, this is ridiculous. We've been offered the property before. <clears throat> every time it's offered, it's more money. Get it now, because it'll just be more the next time they offer it. So that was why it skirted things. Yeah, but, but I appreciated it because it finishes the cemetery. It never came to us, period, though, as far as I yeah, know. Yeah, I know. Even with cheaper, it never came to <laughs> uh, Yeah, because I, I, I had known it had been offered before. And they kept, no, no, you know, we really don't have the money. And finally, it's like.
Uh, Chris, I was unable to reach. Um, oh. Are you, you're not Chris. <laughs> Kelly, would you like to be Chris? <laughs> anyway, uh, Chris, I was unable to reach, and the line wouldn't connect. So it was just, you oh. know, first you have to dial one to reach this number, and then after that it was, don't dial one. <laughs> and then, then, okay, so I tried. Oh, wait a minute. We may be in a lot. No, that's Oh, no, West. that's Wes. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so Wes can be Chris. I that's was not bad. able to reach Chris. That's too bad, because I like his resume. Did he... Did you tell him by email or anything? Um, did, did he ever confirm in any way? He had confirmed originally yes. uh, oh, okay. prior to me being here. And I just did phone contacts with you know all the different candidates. So he, so he knew, he was, he was aware. Yes, yeah, so at one time he was aware. Okay. So. okay. Oh, that's too bad because his res resume sounded really good. Um, okay. So if there are no objectives, objections, I can <laughs> here tonight. to be done. I am going to adjourn our crack work session for this evening. We, we can't reconvene until 745. Okay. I am told. Okay, so we have a five-minute break. I was going to say, give it to